Hi, I'm Joey Only, and welcome to my beautiful home in Wells, British Columbia, up here in the mountains, the Caribou Mountains. Yes, we're talking with John Kaufman. And uh, truthfully, I mean, I've been in lots of scraps, but mostly when I was younger. These days, uh, most of my martial activity involves uh, falling trees, shoveling roofs on houses, climbing mountains, putting out forest fires. Uh, the hardest I ever punched anything in the nose it was actually a cow. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea about me uh, and why some of our conversations go the way we, did, we do. So enjoy this next uh, conversation with John Kaufman. All those things that I do, at the end of the day, martial activity comes down to nothing other than movement. I fight forest fires in the summer for a living. Everything is moving freely in that environment. I must be free to move. Everything must be free to move forgive the hyperbole, but what I call good Kung Fu, okay, uh, comes down to how we're using our bodies physically, okay? Yes, of course, the mind plays a role in how you're using your body physically. Because your body's a physical entity. And everything inside of it is a physical entity too, okay? Including the mind. But not, well, yeah, it, yes, of course, the brain. I, I, I am not qualified to opine on whether the mind, quote unquote, exists independently of the brain. Okay, that's not my area. Okay, mm -hmm. I, I I respect the fact that people can have varying opinions about all that stuff, and that's fine with me. Um, but all I mean is in the context of a martial art which has to be physical, or it's not martial. Remember we said last time, there has to be external movement for force to be expressed, produced, to affect something outside of yourself. So that's what I mean when I say uh, um, that at the end of the day, the Chushan method is about how to use your body in a physical way. Okay, I would say the same thing about any method. In any martial art, no matter what it is, it's essence about how to use your body in a physical way. That's no great um, insight there, okay? <laughs> it's just stating the obvious, I think. So what is Chu Shantin's method that may or may not be different from others and how we use our bodies in a physical way? Everybody talks about, or many people talk about being relaxed, accessing your body's weight, moving as a whole. And many people think that's what they're doing in the method that they're using. But from my own observations and experience, they're not, or at least if they are, it's to a lesser degree. Um, and the degree to which there's any tension anywhere in your body, typically occurring in response to pressure or resistance, or just because the method that you employ uses some level of tension to produce movement and power that the degree to which tension exists anywhere is going to diminish the amount of body weight you're moving and the 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 force of that moving weight produces okay um and the reason i say that is because when you have any part of you that has tension muscle contraction occurring when you move your body weight not all the weight gets transferred out into the object you're moving it into, whether it's a person or the wall or anything else. It bounces back into you the degree to which you have some level of tension anywhere in you, in your muscles. That's why one might think that they're using, they're moving their body weight as a whole to produce force. But if they have some tension, not all that weight is being used as effectively. That's what I want to say. Okay. So that's the importance of releasing or being more sung or weeding out tension, if you will. So the Chu Shan Tin method of Wing Chun and the words used are by no means unique to him. Relax, Fong Song in Cantonese, Fong Song. Okay. Um, release. Um, 
settle, open, okay, um, are not unique to him. Many people use the, that terminology, those terms. But what I, anyway, have found is that the degree to which he personally does it and is getting his students to do it is much greater than anyone else that I've ever experienced. Because I can only talk about my own experience. I can't say John Smith over there, who I've never met or touched hands with, doesn't release as well as Chu Shantin, because how would I know if I don't touch him? All I know is I've never met anybody that releases like we try to do in any other lineage of Wing Chun. So that's just speaking about my own personal experience. That's all. I've met many people who think they are, but I don't think they are when I feel them. For all of us, including any Chu Shantin student, I don't care who you are, it's always going to be a matter of degree anyway. There's no such thing as doing this perfectly. I'm sure Chu Shantin would, would, would tell people that he wasn't perfect at it. All, I mean, again, just stating the obvious, we can only get as good as we get, you know, in the moment. And hopefully we can continue to get better at doing it. So what have I learned from Sifu Ma, especially not limited to, but including the last time I was there a few weeks ago? And that is always going to be the same thing. How to release more, how to be more consistent in maintaining that condition of release so that, and then how to use my body's motion in various ways while I remain that level of release more consistently and allow my body to move. So it's about never restricting the body's movement. And by body's movement, I mean any kind of movement, all movement. So not just, I stand there in my Yiji Kim Yang Ma stance in front of you who were in the same stance and we're rolling and then we're doing movements. And so if I have enough quote unquote flow, I can move from one technique to another very smoothly and efficiently and fast so that I'm never trying to hold a strong bridge immobile, but I'm allowing my arms to continuously move in response to force whether I'm initiating the force or you are, or both of us, I don't mean only that. Yes, that is one example of allowing consistent or constant movement flow. You with me so far? I am. Okay. But when I say allowing nonstop movement of everything, I mean everything. So it's not just standing facing each other doing this. Because although people get really good at that, and by that I mean, you know, you throw you 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 try some technique and I'm able to like switch to another movement to deal with it, you know, and you know, and stop, it's throw my own, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um but my body as a whole is not moving. Just my arms, right? And that is a lot of the chi sa that you see Wing Chun people play. They're standing facing each other, interlock arms, start rolling, and then they start employing these techniques. But they're standing still. Okay. And even if they start to move, what is it tip typically? I mean, you can disagree. What you, your experience may be different from mine. But what I see is, what you typically see is maybe they take one step <laughs> or they maybe step off an angle maybe once. Or they, they take an angle back maybe once or twice. And then they start moving again. Except their arms. Okay? So well, there's very little full body movement. And although I agree that even facing each other, they can have more full body movement because a lot of times, and they will do this, they'll pivot as they move their arms. They'll pivot. Okay. So then they say, okay, that's full body movement. And it's certainly more movement than not pivoting. But that's not what I mean by full body movement. 
So now let me be more specific about what I mean and how Sipuma attempts to help us all, because he is, in my opinion, is due this credit. And if you were to ask him, Chu Shantin would be due the credit, of course, because he is Sipuma's teacher. Okay. I've already said that you can't get the benefit of your body weight in motion producing power to the degree to which you have any tension. So even if you just squeeze a hand, but the rest of you is quote unquote relaxed. And then you start to like move your body by walking or stepping or whatever, or even pivoting. Okay. If that squeezed tense hand, when it comes into contact with something, that movement of your quote unquote relaxed body is not going to come out through the hand to affect as much whatever you're in con whatever the hand's in contact with. It's just not. You can test this out yourself. Okay. You can you can do that. You can have someone hold a hand up like that in front of you, and you can squeeze a hand, but try to relax everything else. And then walk into them and see the result you get. Part of you is going to be knocked back, especially if they have some balance in their stance. Okay. Yeah. But if you have no tension in the hand or anywhere else and you walk into that palm, making contact with your hand, you're going to knock that person right back effortlessly. And they're going to feel like you're some kind of moving mountain and they're not going to know how to stop you. Because pushing against the point of contact isn't going to do them any good. Because the mountain's continuing to move. The mountain being your weight as a whole in motion. What Sifu Ma wants, tries to get us to do is to allow everything to move. So that's ultimately it's going to be, yeah, I'm moving my, my arms, which means, of course, that my joints are rotating or my arm wouldn't be moving. Okay. If I move my body around like this, my arm's moving because my body is, it's connected, my arm's connected to my torso and my torso is moving. So my arm is moving, but my arm is not moving separately from my torso, right? Because my joints are not rotating. Joints of the arm, shoulder, elbow, wrist. Okay. If I want to, my arm. Can you see my arm? Yeah. If I want to move my arm, I have to allow my joints that move the parts of my arm to rotate. Okay. Now my arm is moving separately from my torso. And my torso is not moving. So that's just my arm's weight moving. This is my torso moving moving the arm, but not independently. So this is my arm's weight and my torso weight moving, right? I'm sitting down talking to you, so it's not my full body because my legs are not moving, okay? Now I can move my arm independent of my torso and my torso, and it is also my arm's weight and my body, my torso's weight moving. It's just harder for you to deal with it because I have these independent movements of weight affecting you. I'm not going to fight you sitting down. So I'm standing up now. Okay. Pretend I'm standing up. So now I'm <laughs> moving around. Okay. I'm just moving around. I'm walking. I'm stepping. I'm turning. I'm stepping. I'm moving. It's no big deal. Right. We all know how to do this. Right. Think about dancing. Okay. You know how to move. Your body knows how to move. Okay. I'm not thinking about where my feet are going. I'm just moving my torso around. You can see what I'm doing, can you? Yeah. It's no big deal. Why do I even bother showing it to you? Right. <laughs> it's like, I mean, yeah. it's like, it's like how any of us move, right? If, if we're actually moving instead of like sitting in a chair or, trying to do a martial art, moving like a fucking robot, right? We just move. How do you move to walk across the field to cut down a tree? How do you move to actually wield your axe to chop some wood? Are you just 
You, you, are you just moving part of you? No, oh, no. Everything is moving, right? That's where the power comes from. That's why you could probably chop wood all day long without getting tired when someone else would, could do it for two minutes and then be all out of breath because they're not using their bodies the way that you have learned to do. When I was a 13-year-old kid, I went to Canada's Wonderland and they had one of those things where it's like the big tall, uh, it's got the bell on top and yeah, and you could take the hammer and you hit it and it goes, you know, try to get to 100. So there's these sort of jock guys from Toronto there and they're, strong and this is of course uh you know early 90s they got their fluorescent muscle shirts on you know and they're showing off to their girls and hitting the thing and they're getting up to about 95 and they're grunting and Wah! and then so finally it was my turn to pay my, pay my five bucks and i came in and i you know just swinging the thing like this and wham and then i hit it and it goes up to 94 almost the exact same score as them didn't hit the bell but i'm 13 years old and i'm like you know, a hundred wow. pounds less almost most of these guys. And then their girlfriends are laughing. They're like, this little kid's stronger than you. I, know, <laughs> I just swing an ax there, city slickers, I said, right? But, uh, you know, and as you've seen now with me, like a lot of my life I spend on ground that is uneven. So uh, yeah. hence some yeah. of my, my pigeon towing um, things that I tend to do because I'm often doing, as you say, just letting the feet fall where they must. And not putting, as I'm, you know, I slip and fall all the time up there because of it. But I, I just, I'm loose and I don't spend a lot of time trying to be rigid. I'm trying to just, you know, a great example of this is if I'm going downhill steep, I don't try to hold my energy back and slowly go down because okay. I'm just going to end up slipping my feet out. I, just, I see. I let, if the gravity wants me to go down, I'm going down. Does it, does it, what, what happens just, what happens if you start going too fast that, that then you're at risk of losing your balance and falling, right? So then you have to, you have to slow yourself down to keep your balance, right? Sometimes I do. And sometimes that'll be where I might jam in those toes as I'm going wide but, my legs out and jam those toes down to try to start okay. slowing speed down. But there's always trees and things you can hit and push and grab and, and yeah, um, yeah, I, all their I hear you, of course. My yeah. point is that 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 you have to make adjustments, whatever those adjustments might be, as you just described some of them for us. Um, Hundreds to maintain, sometimes to, in ma small to maintain stretch. to maintain your balance is my point, right? When we talk about the methodology I'm sharing with you, it's a, at the end of the day, it's all about maintaining your balance. So we talk about moving your weight around, but you cannot use your weight effectively if you're out of balance. Okay. So for you to, to, to move your weight through me, to affect me, to knock me off my balance, my center, or to, to penetrate your force into me, a strike. Okay. A kick. Okay walking through me a shoulder strike whatever okay to 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 for you to do that to me effectively to use your weight in that way you have to be in control of it which means you have to maintain your balance your equilibrium and so um what happens a lot that i see anyway is people are confronted with a force and subconsciously or unconsciously, that they're, they're, they're trying to support that force. So they don't get bowled over, so they don't get collapsed and hit. So that they, they ground themselves. They press into the ground with their feet and they push back against the force to try to control the force, stop its momentum, overpower it. Okay. Um, and any any attempt any action rather of doing what i've just said is diminishing your own movement right yeah if, if i quote unquote ground myself you know those people who were taught in wing chun for example 
never go backwards. Okay? Always go forward. Or at the very least, hold your ground. Okay? So if that's what somebody's trying to do, then they're automatically limiting their movement. I think that's more what I consider to be a desire than necessarily always uh, practical. Sometimes taking a step back is a very handy thing to do. I well, can think of one time where it saved me getting punched in the face. One step. <laughs> One's desire is going to have a... I would submit that one's desire, in other words, what's in the mind, is going to come out through the hand, as my old Sifu, Limoy San, used to say. In other words, it's going to uh, it's going to be expressed through the body. So that if what's in my desire is not to go backwards or to hold my ground, then I'm more likely not to move as much. Now, that doesn't mean that maybe I'll end up moving because I have to. But my point is simply that, 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 you know, you said th that might be a desire, but you would end up moving. And I'm, what I'm suggesting to you is whatever your desire is, is going to be determinative of how you move or not move. Look, ultimately, okay. It's going to play its role on how you use your body. So if I'm being taught in my Wing Chun that I really don't want to move backwards or I only want to move forwards, then I'm not going to move as much as if I have total freedom to move everything in any moment, in every mo moment. Chu Shantin is free to move. If he doesn't want to move, maybe he won't move. If you are standing in front of me right now, and our arms are touching each other, and you start to apply pressure to me, I can stand there without moving, and you're not going to be able to move me. I'm pretty confident in saying that, okay? But that is not, but if that's what's in my mind, so I, I want to not let you move me, and then I want to do something. Maybe I can pull that off in the moment. Maybe I can't. Depends what you're doing, and how good you are at what you're doing. But why? Why do I want, why, why is that something that I feel the need that I have to be able to do? Why shouldn't I be totally free to move if I want to, if I need to, in every moment? So I don't have a desire not to move. In fact, what I'm trying to cultivate now is, if you want to use this term, the desire to allow myself to move all the time, nonstop. If you, if you push on me, I'm free to move. So I just take your force and I move it. And I move back. I move anywhere I want to. If I'm continuously moving, just think about this. Then my body weight is in continuous motion. And it's that moving weight that you're going to have to deal with all the time. Whether I'm pushing it into you, whether I'm going down, whether I'm moving in any direction. Okay? In combination with the movement of my arms. It's still carrying my weight. So here. So here. So here. Okay? Yeah. Body movement. No big deal. It's only a big deal, and I would suggest, because we typically subconsciously are not permitting ourselves to do the motion. There's a part of us that feels we have to stand there and defend, or that I have to stand and support my strong bridge so it doesn't collapse and get hit. If you're, if you're punching me, why in God's name would I want to stand in front of you and give you a chance to punch me in the head? You know, if, you, if, if, you're, if you're not close enough to hit me, then I don't have to do anything. Steve Gorick, if, this, if you're over there and I'm here and I can sit on this chair, this could be my fighting stance. Yeah. Okay? 
But if you're close enough to, to, to provide some risk to me, either because, because you could reach me with a kick because your leg's longer than your arm, okay? So as soon as you get close enough to be able to kick me with like a side kick or a straight kick or some sort of a use of a leg, let alone an arm, then why would I want to stay within your range and let you try to contact me? I want to move. Maybe I want to move into your range closer. Sure. Okay. But by doing so, I'm moving my whole body weight. If I'm not just like planting one foot on the ground and stepping with a front foot, then I'm not really taking advantage of my weight. No, I just part of it. Okay. But if I move, like, remember that block of wood we talked about? If the whole block is moving, you see, then I can move into you. And your kick, your punch, whatever limb contacts me, it has to deal with all of my weight in motion. It's, it's probably more likely to get crushed, your limb, or, it, or my weight will throw you off balance, even if you're bigger than me. Now, if you're using your weight effectively and you weigh more than me, then yeah, I'm the one that's going <laughs> to be at risk when the, when the contact is made. No question about it. So be free to move. Everything must be free to move all the time. And everything means everything. Remember, I told you last time, I think, Marty Anderson, one of his most used dictum is nothing moves till the center moves. And when the center moves, everything moves and nothing is left behind. Nothing is left behind. Now, when he says the center, I'm saying to you, I'm comfortable in saying what he means. And I, I know what I mean by that. And that is, whole body movement. It's not the center moving, but other parts of you are not moving. No. It, moving, yes. Thank you. Everything moves. Nothing is left behind. That's what's meant by you hit me with your body, not your hand. Yeah, it's your hand or whatever the point of contact is that's making the contact that the force is is powered through to penetrate into me. But it's your body weight in motion that's actually hitting me, right? Yep. When you use your axe to chop down a tree manually, what is doing the chopping? It's all of your body weight, right? It's, it's not just the head of the axe. And it's not just your arms. A documentary came here yeah. for a historic gold site, and they wanted me to chop down a tree, and they filmed it. And it was a, a laborious pain in the ass. And then they didn't <laughs> use the footage. I was choked. They did, they did not use it. Okay. <laughs> no, like you can even throw three seconds of me wailing on that tree. No, there's a reason. Uh, they make chainsaws every day. I, I, this is a little bit maybe off topic or a bit bizarre, but... You know, when you use a chainsaw, you don't have to, you, you still got to use your body as a whole, I'm sure, to manipulate the saw because oh, it, it's more efficient. It's more efficient to do that. But the same but, principles apply. Yeah. Okay. There you are. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I'm, so, I'm getting so, into my space to, so it's, so, to put wait, a wait, cut in. Yeah. It's the same energy, same centeredness, same. Because if I'm not, but I, it's it's trickier on slippery, slidey hillsides and snow and whatnot, right? So even more so, I have to have my feet good and stable because I don't want to be sliding while the thing's running. Right. But uh, you, certainly, because... there's one thing that I, f I find I can't do with my chainsaw uh, in a Nimtow state, and that's sharpen the damn thing. I just get the worst pain in my arms every time. <laughs> and I, I think about it like, relax elongate as i'm filing and i'm 
Oh my God. Well, For some let, reason, listen, that listen, motion is painful to me. Let, let me interrupt you to, to tell you something in response to that. Again, using the chainsaw example. The effectiveness of the chainsaw is due to the engine of the saw, however it works mechanically with gears or something to rotate the chain, right? Correct. To, 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 to move the saw to cut the wood, right? So in other words, you have that movement that's occurring as a result of the engine and the whatever mechanism is in play to actually that the chain is op in operation, right? Well, on top of okay. that, the cuts have to be straight. So you're holding the chainsaw and your body's manipulating the saw itself, which is the use of your body weight in a certain way. But at the same time, the saw is running. You have that mechanics in operation, which is really doing the bulk of the work and cutting through the log, right? Now I want to analogize it. Why am I mentioning any of this? Because now your arm... It's like the chainsaw, okay? So you have the joint rotations operating the arm like the mechanics of the chainsaw turn the chain, okay? At the, but you also have the body weight itself moving simultaneously, okay? So that's why you have more effective power in martial, martial uh, use when you have the body weight itself moving along with the arm moving because the joints are being allowed to rotate at the same time. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Okay. At the end of the day, it's about movement. The reason why the chainsaw is more effective than the ax is because you have the movement of the chain in addition to the movement of the saw itself. Okay. The reason why you're more effective martially when you say hit me is when you allow your arm to move as well as your body movement. If the arm doesn't move independently, but the body moves the arm, you're still going to have a lot of power to damage me. If the arm is moving, but the body weight's not moving, you're going to have power, but it's going to be less power. But, but logically, if you have, have both the arm moving and the body moving you have you have the most power depending on how fast you get all of that moving accelerating okay that's physics mass times acceleration okay so how can we get the most mass it's by releasing better and how can we move the most mass it's by staying released when we move the body as a whole like when you saw me step around and do whatever motion, whether it's a pivoting or a stepping. So now picture yourself cheesing with someone. Instead of standing still in front of them and they're in front of you and you're pulling whatever techniques you're doing, even if you're good at flowing when you're doing it. Now imagine yourself standing in front of somebody. Your arms are interlocked. You're going to cheese out. And now, Every movement is a full movement. Move your body, move your body, move your body, move your body, move your body. Okay? Body, 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 body. And if, 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 if what is your priority is that everything is always free to move in every moment, then you're automatically going to stay relaxed. Because even just subconsciously, or maybe especially subconsciously. Your mind and body knows that wherever there's tension, it's going to slow you down. It's going to inhibit movement. So if your sole priority is to be, uh, be able to move freely all the time, you're going to stay more relaxed. <laughs> because if you tense anything, whether you're trying to limit your movement or tense or not, your mind and body know itself that you're inhibiting your movement. So you need the mind to allow yourself the freedom to move. 
and your body then will be in a state to allow the, mo the movement to occur more readily. Let's put it that way. At the end of the day, it's about movement. Movement of the mind, movement of the body. What do I mean movement of the mind? Why am I even mentioning something that sounds esoteric and that, you know, some people that do martial arts don't want to hear about? Uh, fighting's fighting. What the fuck does the mind have to do with that? Except that I, I need to be aggressive, okay? Um, <clears throat> because whatever's in your mind is going to determine the state of your body, your physical state. We know this, and we know it medically through studies. That's why they always talk about how stress has is bad for you. Because stress can, puts a, a uh, 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 effect within the body that's going to be detrimental to your to your organs, to your blood circulation, to the use of muscles. It wears you out, okay? Stress. So, you know, when I would as a, a trial lawyer trying cases, for example, it's very stressful. Uh, any lawyer that tells you otherwise is lying. It it doesn't mean you can't perform at peak. You can. But it's still stressful, okay? You're standing up in court and there's the jury watching you and the judge and people in the back of the courtroom and your client's freedom is at stake. You might go to jail for life if you fuck up, okay? And there's the, the, everybody there is against you because you're defending and everybody else wants that asshole to go to prison, okay? <laughs> it's stressful and things Please. are happening and evidence is coming in. And you have to meet that evidence and argue against it or introduce your own or try to cross-examine a witness and make legal arguments to, for various purposes. There's a lot to juggle, okay? There's a lot to know. There's a lot of expertise to apply. And the, the, the stakes are very high, okay? It's stressful. So you go home from a day of trial work, you're exhausted. OK, but not because you were chopping wood all day and not because you're working on the farm. So why should you be so physically exhausted? You're sitting in a fucking chair trying a case or standing up. Why should you be so physically tired? Because it's stressful. So stress has an effect on you physically on the body. The mental stress of trying a case has an effect on you physically because of the stress. OK, so if what's in my mind subconsciously is I need to stop you from hitting me. I need to stop your motion. I need to somehow stop my motion. Okay. Then that's going to create tension in the body, which is a form of stress, physical stress. You're stressing the muscles. And that's going to limit my movement, which in turn is going to diminish the amount of moving weight that I can bring to bear to introduce a force to affect you. Okay. So if what I desire is not to go backwards, <laughs> I'm not going to be as free to move. If what my priority is, is simply to move, then I don't really have to be concerned with you hitting me. I only have to be concerned with moving because my mo motion itself will deal with your force. It'll turn it away. It'll avoid it. It'll overpower it if I'm moving into it or through it. Okay. My movement is what I'm using. At the end of the day, martial activity is about nothing other than movement. Please subscribe to the channel. Thanks very much for coming by. A new episode will be available in a couple days of John. In the meantime, today I got my show with Frankie McDonald. Do tune in, subscribe to the channel, share these videos, hit like, support the algorithms if you could. And I should go without saying any negative comments directed towards me or John Kaufman will be deleted because uh, that's not what I'm about. Okay, have a great day.